Okay, we got another story for the I'm Kind of Famous podcast, Mental Health Week um, Confessions episode. So we got a uh, friend of the show, Dave the Caveman Rickles. We're going to talk um, uh, about a story that's pretty close to him. So uh, very personal. But before we get into that, we want to make sure that uh, if you need help, uh, you feel like you need help, you know someone needs help, or um, want a service that's convenient the way that you like to use services, there's Talkspace.com. Talkspace is a subscription app that you can, or a subscription service that you can use where you can get a therapist when you need it, anytime you need it, 24 hours, um, and you can use it by text. If that's how you want to use it, you want to make a phone call, you want to chat online, or just email it back and forth, that's what Talkspace is for, to make things more convenient and less un- uh, less uncomfortable to set up an appointment and take time out for work. This is to make things a lot easier for you if you need that kind of help. Now, David. I got to call you David now because we're professional. Now. Um, you, we, me and you made a uh, documentary called Evolver Die that was going into your uh, fight with Michael Chandler. Um, uh, I happen to know that there was a, uh, 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 I mean, it was a big build up, a big anticipation for this fight. Um, you was changing some things in how you trained for this fight, uh, going up to, uh, was it Colorado? Yeah. Going to Colorado, um, to do the man, was it Manitoba incline? Yeah. The Manitou incline. Manitou incline. Um, and going into that, um, there's some things that happened um, that kind of forced you to adjust a little bit. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, um, well, I mean, just one of my one of my best friends uh, took his took his life. Uh, his name is Matthew Polk, and uh, it was a. Uh, I was up there. I was training in Colorado, preparing for. Uh, you know, a, a big fight, and uh, I'm getting all serious and everything. And um, a friend of mine passed away uh while I was here in town, and uh, he 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 hung himself, and um, we were. It was one of those things where you get called, and uh, you just don't even believe. Like, man, it's it's just like, oh, he'll be fine. I was like, he'll be fine, like, mm. cause. The way they describe it, you know, everyone's trying to be so sensitive to everybody's feelings, I guess. Right. It's like the way they were talking to me was like, he's just going to, oh, he's just, he's in the hospital and uh, he's in a coma or whatever it may be, whatever it was, and he's going to be fine. Like, he's going to come out of it and everything will be cool, you know. And that's kind of what I thought at first, you know, you didn't want to think that your your friend was going to die. And then, and then I went and saw him. And, in the hospital? Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I think that, you know, listening to the, you know, doing my own research on the internet, and uh, that's when I realized, you know, that'd be the last time I ever get to see him. So that was before you made the trip to Calif- uh, Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, that's right before I, I was supposed to. I was supposed to leave that day, and uh, um, I, you know, of course I had to go see him. I had to. I had to see him. Yeah. So when you uh, no way around that. so when you went to Colorado, um, w- w- what what ended up happening? I mean, well, uh, like I said, it's just one of those things that disbelief and uh, you know, I handle, uh, I guess, traumatic experiences like that differently. Is I just try to avoid them. Mm. Like I just, I'm like, okay, this didn't happen. Okay. Uh, this is, you know, I just, uh, I put it in the back of my head, I guess, because I was training for my fight and I think I was like two or three weeks out and I, I'm about to go run the incline. We had just got into Colorado, just got into Colorado. We're like, let's go hit the incline. We're going to get a really good workout. And, uh, this was, uh, um, Matt was on the respirator and everything for i think it was two or three days before his family made the decision 
So, I mean, this is like four days after his mm-hmm. passing, you know, nope. after the he uh, wasn't, you know. Took so, his life. what 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 makes that incline like in a big deal? Well, the incline's a mile straight up into the mountains. It's just railroad ties. It's, uh, I mean, I don't know what degree of, but it's, uh, it's one of they they built it for Olympians to run on. So you're preparing for this fight with that kind of, you know, uh, burden on your back going into that. I mean, you know, I, I met you guys close for how long? Since eighth, I met him eighth grade and then we really became friends in high school. And I mean, he was like my ride or die, dude. I mean, we did everything together. We got in lots of fist fights together and um, he was genuinely my best friend and uh yeah we just we had so many life experiences together we just we were like very similar as well but i'm going to run the manitou incline and uh like i said this is four days after his passing and uh i've been trying to you know thinking i could just go i'm just gonna go out there and train and uh you know um blah 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 i'll just uh kind of carry this around and I'll be okay. But I had a like a, a, a severe mental breakdown, like halfway up the Manitou incline. And fighters Stephen Wynn and uh Johnny Marigo were there with me and you know they they don't understand you know, they don't understand what was going on with me, but yeah. I just I I literally I stopped running and just started bawling my eyes out and I felt sick. Like I couldn't uh it it felt like I it felt like I was just, I couldn't even control it. Like it was un- completely uncontrollable. So it just kind of randomly hit you? It randomly hit me, man. It was just like, I, I'm halfway up and I'm thinking about it. And uh, it and it hits me that I'm just never going to see him again. and I'm never going to get to just all of everything. You know, I don't get to see him ever again. What could I have done differently? This, that, uh... And uh, I had a, a tr- like that was a true mental breakdown, and they had to care. They carried me to the car. I was bawling uncontrollably. They had to carry me to the car. I cried for about twenty four hours straight, and I drove back to Wichita. So what happened once you got back to Wichita? Um, got back to Wichita, and uh, you know, got together with friends, tried to tried to talk about things because that, you know, was something I had to do. I had to try to deal with the emotions. You know, I think I was just trying to avoid them so bad um, that they all just stacked up and my, my mind was like, no, you have to deal with this right now. Now, you still took the fight. Why didn't you just pull out the fight? Um, I just don't – I've never been that type of person. I mean, I could have easily pulled out of the fight. I mean, we're talking your best friend committing suicide – uh, two weeks before you fight. I mean, I was emotional wreck, and but I had trained. I was prepared physically at least, but mentally I really wasn't like there, you know. So I could have pulled out, but I didn't, and uh, I just I don't, you know, I don't think anyone should pull out of. I'm a businessman, you know what I mean? Like I needed money for my family too. So, um, do you do you feel like that there was a um a sign or or maybe something that didn't seem right around that time or have you even looked back on that yeah i look back on it a lot and uh and in hindsight um matt one of the things like i will say is like mental health awareness like if you have friends that have really highs and really lows like those are the people you watch out for in my in, you know from my experience of of going through all this with uh, me and my friends and it, Matt had really good highs and really bad lows. And, uh, uh, he was in a really bad low point, of course, when he ended up taking his life. And, uh, you know, it was about a month before me and Matt started working out a, a lot together. He want, he wanted to start getting ready to do a, a triathlon with me, mm. and um, we were working out 
um, maybe it was two months before. But we were working out really hard. We were swimming and doing all this stuff together. And then, uh, you know, the triathlon kind of fell through because of that fight and everything. And then uh, I I was running with Matt one day. And this was a few weeks before he ended up taking his life. And he, at the end, he just sat down with me. And, you know, he had been going through some rough stuff with his girlfriend. And, uh he asked me like how I fixed my life because I was a mess when I was younger. You know, mm. I, you know, it, I was a troubled kid for sure. And, uh, you know, he felt like just things weren't going his way and he was asking me about how he could fix his life. And, uh, I get, you know, honestly, I gave him like, I just like, dude, Oh, you're everything's bro. You're okay. You know, I just gave him like, but thinking back to it, like the way that he looked at me, he really was looking for like help. He was looking for, he genuinely, like that was the moment I could have, you know, if, oh man, if there was a time that I could have probably changed some things, like that was it. And, uh, and you said that was like I'm, two, this two was months. like two or three weeks before. Oh yeah. We just went on a long run. We just were, we just did a long run and, he looked, I man, just the way I can remember vividly, just the way he looked at me and the way he said it. I kind of shrugged it off as, "Oh, Matt, you're, you know, you're fine, man. Like you're gonna get through all this, bro." And then, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. I gotta live with that. So, it is one of those things that, uh, you know, one one thing, you know, up on, on these series of shows, uh, to try to tackle with is trying to figure out the difference between like depressed and sad you know someone just going through something real quick that you know you just give them some affirmation and it's good versus like what's really going on behind the curtain which is which is tough i mean across the board because with social media you got so much of the just attention seeking and things like that so it's even hard to even tell when someone is using social media as an outlet right to to act to get help so and matt matt you know, this for me, the, he's like the prime example of like what you see on the surface is not exactly what's going on because, you know, his true friends knew that Matt was actually pretty emotional, you know. Yeah. But to everybody else, Matt was stone cold. Like he was tough dude who didn't give a shit about anything and, or anyone kind of stuff. You know, he'd fight anybody. He, you know, he was so prideful of himself, you know, and uh I guess suicide just never really all of us were pretty baffled, honestly. Was it random? Did he leave anything to even say how he was feeling? I'm I you know, I don't know. I think mm. his family would know, but mm. I, I'm from what I haven't heard anything about a note or anything like that. I'm sure I you know, I would think that he did, but I don't know. What advice would you wanna give to someone who may have been in, may be in your position right now who may be listening who had a friend who may have just Man, said something like i said if you've got your fr you know if you're like because he was my best friend i knew him on a deeper level you know like i said when i could look back on that moment and i felt it then you know and i should have taken it more seriously i mean really feel your friends out really feel them out you know look them in the eyes and when they're having their lows or they want to talk about something or or this and that you know because it, it could be the last time you know it, it highs and lows uh are um i'm pretty sure are pretty constant in depression depression uh, and bipolar yeah so uh if you've got some friends like that, I mean, I don't care how tough they are, you know, or or whatever whatever front they try to put on. Um, I th I think it's just really important to try to connect to your friends on a deeper level and uh, see when they're really in pain. Well, with that, is was there anything else you want to say about it, or? Um, I just man, and and also, you know, as as. You know, I'd like to, I'd like to think, you know, if there's any of my friends that ever listen to this or anything, you know, 
this is my open invitation. Talk to me about anything. Please, you know, try to, if you, if you have any thoughts, find that person that is your best friend and talk to them about it, you know. Um, talk to them about anything, Get, you know. But, I don't know. I, I can't pretend to be a, a, an expert. <laughs> I'm not an expert. Yeah. I'm, I'm just I'm jumping definitely in not an expert. Awareness. So, uh well, yeah. if if you know anybody or you feel that you may be in this place or if you think that someone needs help, there is always the uh, National Suicide Prevention Lifeline uh, at 1-800-273-8255 or you can go suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Uh, we'll have that linked in the show notes. And um, also, you know, we talked about this film earlier, but... Um, we dedicated this uh, film we made called Evolve or Die uh, to Matthew. So if you want to check that out, you know, we open it up with it and you can kind of see uh, some of this process that went to um, going into this fight um, with the omission of some of the things that happened uh, in between. So uh, thanks for sharing this. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, I just like to. You know, I I did last year. I did an uh, AFSP uh, uh, charity event, yeah. and uh, you know, ever since Matt's passing, I'd like to help anybody in this as best I can. You know, and uh, thank you for having me on, and thank you for considering me. All right, that's it. That's a wrap. So, in light of you being kind of famous, why the hell I'm kind of famous? <laughs> Who the hell she knows?